Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome into Sabbath School Study Group. My name is Chris Bailey, and this is part number three of our five-part series, talking about the uniqueness of the scriptures, the Bible. And today we're going to look at how the Bible is, in fact, a history book. But before we get started, we want to pray. Father, we're praying in the name of Jesus that you open our eyes to the, the glory of history and how you use this to bless us today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Yes, the Bible is more than a storybook. It is a history book. And I know for some people, history is not a favorite subject. Personally, I've always enjoyed history. I like knowing what has happened and, and why it's happened, who was a part of it. But if you're not in that category, it's okay because the Lord has a book that's full of stories. But remember, these stories don't just serve to, to meet that narrative desire that pretty much all of us have because we all like a good story, right? But the reason why we've gotten all these stories because these stories create history. And history is vital, especially when it comes to a Bible-believing or doctrinal holding kind of Christianity. For example, if you go to the book of Luke, in the book of Luke chapter 24, verse 34, there is given a historical fact, even a story fact, where the Bible says, the Lord is risen a need and hath appeared to Simon. So now this is the story of Christ's resurrection. And in the story, it says that the Lord has appeared. He's risen indeed. And he appears to Simon or Simon Peter. So at that point, it's, it's a story point. It's a part of a narrative. But that story point makes a history. And that history serves as a foundation for belief, a foundation for, for faith. It creates a theology or an understanding of God and how and why we should believe in him. Because based on this story point in Luke 24, look at how you get to this theological point. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14, it says, For if we believe the story, if we believe the narrative that Jesus died and rose again, here's where we can put our faith. Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. In other words, will Jesus bring back to life when he returns? This is history now serving as a basis for what you believe. So we don't just believe empty promises, but the history of the Bible gives a context for our belief going forward to stand in. Look at it again here in the book of Romans, Romans chapter eight, verse 11, where we saw the point in Luke 24 that the Lord is risen indeed. And now here's another point we can take from this. In our faith, we can believe that if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead, that same spirit, if that spirit dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. The, the story point, the historical fact now as a basis for your faith today, what the Lord did for him now by that same spirit, he can do in me that I don't have to live the way I used to live. I don't have to do what I used to do, but now that same spirit that animated him way ago is now here. And he's even in here in me now to do what is impossible, to do what I could otherwise not do. I hope you see the connection in why history, it's not just cool, but it's crucial. It's vital to biblical Christianity. Otherwise you're just left to go by how you feel, to go by how you think. And that kind of religious relativism will get you nowhere. And in fact, it'll only get you further from what we understand and call truth. Absolute truth. Absolute truth as established in historical fact to serve as the basis for faith, not just for today, but a faith that will endure going forward forever. <laughs>